Blood Street Brawler as console owners know it was originally released as Bop and Rumble in North America and Street Hassle in Europe back in 1987. Let's start off with the MS-DOS release. You play as Duke Davis or Duke Dungan in some cases. Duke goes from stage to stage beating up gangsters that get in his way. I have to say, having Duke roam the streets in nothing more than a tight pair of yellow shorts does not scream out badass to me. Maybe it's the shades. The stages are relatively short in this game, consisting of 3 or 4 screens. However, the unusual control method will make tackling these stages longer than they seem. Basically pushing a direction will make Duke move, duck and jump. To pull off any moves, you must hold down the attack button while pushing a direction. Down attack tickles the belly of the dog, or flicks away bombs for example, while left attack performs a kick move. There are a variety of special attacks too, ranging from a grab, chest bounce and headbutt. Bad Street Brawler is a pretty crappy game, but it's a game that is crappy in a way that it is good for what it's meant to be. I mean, come on, we're attacking old guys with walking sticks, tickling the bellies of bulldogs or punching out a gorilla. No way is this game meant to be taken seriously. There's even an old woman who attacks you with her handbag if you so much as touch her. Yes, Bad Street Brawler is crap but that's because I suspect it's meant to be. This is the Commodore 64 port and you know what? It is better than the MS-DOS version. Not in how it plays, no that's exactly the same, but in how it looks and sounds. I think the slightly more music colour palette of this version looks much nicer and the way the music fades in and out allowing for some pretty good sound effects is appealing. I must also say I'm rather surprised at how large the sprites are in this version. Next up is the ZX Spectrum version, which takes a different style in the looks department. The core gameplay is the same, but as you can see it looks nothing like the previous two versions. Also, unlike the MS-DOS and C64 games with their different stages, this version splits one long stage into individual stages. So it's more like one long street rather than individual locations. Sadly, the lack of music and uninteresting sound effects don't help this game, making it a rather boring experience. Bad Street Brawler even got a NES port, and well, they kinda messed up what was charming about the original. For the start, the game now plays differently, with two buttons being used for the moves, and no combination of the directional pad. This limits the amount of moves you can do per stage, from 4 to 2. The NES version was one of the only two games specifically designed for use with Mattel's Power Glove, so that probably explains the change in controls. I also think the faster speed of this version makes for a more free-for-all experience, without any real thought being put into attacks. Not that the original was anything special mind you, but now the experience is even more mind-numbing. Still, at least it looks colourful.
something a little special for you, an Amiga knockoff version of Street Hassle. This version is based upon the ZX Spectrum release and comes from the Polish developer World Software, who are also known for the awful yet gory Franco the Crazy Revenge and Doorman. This version mixes things up a bit with an all new intro, slightly different gameplay style and an all new more badass look. It is awful though being a far worse playing game than the original DOS release. Still, it is funny in a way, since the base storyline to this game is that you woke up all cranky after not being able to get a good night's sleep after a night out on the town. And let's take a look at all those versions of Bad Street Brawler running side by side. Thank <laughs> you. 